today on Kings and Library Services Facebook page and YouTube channel, I would like to introduce you to the debut novel by Kessia Lupo. This is a young adult fiction tale titled We Are Blood and Thunder. Did you know you can borrow this book right now as an ebook on the Libby Overdrive app? Equally, if you prefer a book in your hands, you may reserve a copy from one of our Kings and Library branches when we reopen or at the time of recording this video, Surbiton Library Branch is offering a ready read service. Be sure to check our Facebook page or the council's library page for further details and to fill in the request form. You could say that you would like a book to do with magic, that you would like works similar to this author and so forth and our fantastic library staff will compile a collection of books for you to borrow today. Just a useful tip there. So when I saw this book on our branch shelves I couldn't wait to borrow it. You know it's got magic, it's got such a detailed thought provoking realm in which this whole story takes place. There's history uh, uh, wrapped around the evolving plot and you have two strong female lead characters which is wonderful however i would love to know if you feel my pain <laughs> please comment on this video i have not finished this book feeling satisfied tempted to reread it to see if i have made very wrong assumptions about characters and particularly about the ending of the book but I feel there was a lot of research and effort by the author put into certain aspects of the book and you were teased with these details and there are some very striking illustrations at the front of the book to give you more of an insight into the uh, realm of the Valorian continent which is here and yet all of the hints of climatic revelations and the significance of characters you, you're sort of led on this trail there's a, going to be a huge build up a huge moment and for me it did not materialise It my emotions throughout this journey when I reached what would have been the the huge pinnacle moment fell flat so I'd be really curious to know what your thoughts are too. So, the book takes place in the Duke's Forest and as you can see there is quite a menacing storm cloud that has overtaken the city and has resulted in a huge number of deaths and unfortunately the introduction to the plague into this, I suppose, small kingdom and rather terrifyingly, the activity of the buried ancestors, there's a few sounds, uh, there's unnatural movements, and you are a little bit on edge. We then have, uh, once you, if you were, to escape uh, the barricaded walls of this kingdom, you go along the King's Road and you end up in the City of Kings. Uh, I understand that there is a second book out by this author taking place as well in the Valorian continent so I wonder if it will talk more about Port Regal, the wishes and the wasteland but there is no real discussions about that in this book. So, we have Lena and we have Constance. So Lena has been convicted of being a mage. She has been sentenced to death by the Lord Justice, Lord Chatham, and his hounds are chasing after her. They've got a taste for blood and they fully intend to maul her to death. She is running for her life and immediately your heart is in your mouth. You can really feel the fear vibrating through this young woman and the absolute desperation that she's experiencing. And she is eagerly searching for a way to get through this war, her guardian Vigo, he he has died and he like bestowed upon her a secret way to escape this, this small kingdom 
and to go through a crack in the wall, look out for the rose bushes and the overgrown thorns, and you you will just about pull yourself through. Uh, so that's Lena's goal, and you know we're given an insight into her past, how as a a baby, because of her marking a a, a huge sort of. I guess like a, a huge birthmark, a, a huge mole. Uh, she has been abandoned outside the entrance to the cripplings living quarters and um, you, you start developing some form of relationship with her and you wonder if there's an element of darkness to her character. Is she truly a victim of being wrongly convicted or is there something much deeper going on there? Um, she is a crippling so the cripplings are people who are not meant to be seen, they are meant to remain covered with their habit, habit. they cannot appear above ground, especially in the daylight, and they deal with the ancestors, so, so they prepare the, um, the dead for their sacred rituals and burials, and live amongst all these family vaults and tombs. So a very dark life, Lena feels truly trapped, and her only comfort is a mysterious butterfly brooch that I guess uh, flew to her when she was younger and uh, I guess six years before this uh, the current day where she's fleeing for her life and it, it flew it seemed to have an energy some form of magic that powered it and it sought her out and then suddenly dropped to the ground in front of her it was no longer uh, a mobile object and as a cryptin, you're not meant to touch any the ancestors unless you're dealing with, say, removing their eyes or um, preparing their bodies with embalming and so forth. And you're definitely not meant to touch their possessions. And yet, Lena is drawn to this item. It would be the only thing she has ever owned. And she does pocket it. And it's her comfort in times of stress and, and, and worry. She will touch it. It's, it's very key, this little object. So you slowly begin to form an attachment to Lena and she meets a woman, our also second female lead, Constance in the forest, who is wearing a very peculiar mask, uh, which she can see the traces of spells. Um, it's called the, when she turns a dial, she sees the spellscape, the threads of previous spells cast by mages and how she might deconstruct them to say, gain entrance to a gate or to, um, I suppose in a way, uh, affect someone's well-being, their health and just have such a huge amount of power. Uh, so Constance, uh, entrusts Lena saying, Emrys, please give him, uh, this is the way out of this forest, follow these lit up, uh, this these footsteps you will find your way through and you will meet a man called Emrys tell him he was wrong and I'm sorry so you're like okay so Lena's trying to run for her life and now she's a messenger okay I'm just gonna go with it um and it, it, it's hinted about magic the color of it purple gray blue has a significance and the author does at the very start of the book which I eagerly kept going back to uh, tell you about the holy council of the nine gods so if you are a mage you cannot worship the ancestors you are inf infected with the chaos which is a power and this to prevent you becoming a rogue and a danger to yourself and everyone around you you must be bound to a temple uh, you're, you will undergo a series of tests and your magic uh, will reveal itself, essentially its colour, and this will influence which temple you will belong to and which god you will worship and act out duties for. So for example, um, Constance is under Mithras, which is the mask god, the magic is purple, and the disciples are known as spies and assassins, and little is known about their specific continent of work and their temples tend to be hidden away. So Emrys, who is very divine. Uh, he's actually a huntsman's god. He's the third huntsman. Uh, he uh, worships the god Fall. His magic is silver and they're responsible for police and the magical population. Uh, they are tasked with finding and bringing in rogues, dispatching radicals and capturing magical criminals. Um, Few are suited to the magic of Fall and the life-threatening demands exalted upon the disciples. So, 
you're so keen to know more about the magic and more about the temples and when you reach the city of the king you you want to know more but oh the author just keeps teasing you and you're left so frustrated you know we've got a warrior god explorer god a healer god a ruler god justice goddess the land goddess the golden goddess and there's no mention of them and you really hope that you are going to encounter more mages with more diversity and instead you're just a continuous witness to the emotional turmoil of these two women and their objectives about their own magic uh, discovery or also their their seek for power and to rectify previous mistakes and you just you find hard to become very charged and keen to get into each chapter even though I do so I would love to know your thoughts did Constance frustrate you did was there a point where you were lured in you felt her plight at losing her mother so young and you are keen to know what she is searching for in the crypts at night is it a, a, a magical entity is it a physical object there's so many teasing moments in the wording of paragraphs and you you are drawn in for that but and you, you your heart does go out to her and you're curious what did she have to sacrifice in her training at her temple that that has changed her forever and made her unrecognizable to her family when she returns as the heir to the Duke's Forest and there, there is so much room for more books to be written about the characters development and even the ending that there there is room for you to have twists in what you think is going to happen next once you've closed that page so why don't you have a go reading this book tell me what you think i'm glad i've read it i may jump into it again uh, but i feel still very frustrated so give it a go it'd be a really good discussion for example we have a teen digi book club right now that happens twice a month and it's for teenagers aged 11 to 17. let us know what you think about this novel and it would be great to know if you have read Kessia Lupo's second book. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day.